call the meeting of the uh, monthly meeting of library trustees uh, to order as was duly um, posted for this time, just other than the recording of the uh, Zoom call. Does any members or anybody have any recording devices? No. Do we have any members of the public uh, present? I, I think we do, Lizzie. Um, if you're going to have CC on as a panelist, perhaps you should introduce her and sure. set yeah. some rules. Okay, thanks, Mary. I'm just fiddling with the attendee side to make sure that I didn't see anyone else. Um, yeah, we have uh, Connie Kranos, CC, is our strategic consultant slash partner. Um, so she'll be there for you to update uh, later on about the strategy. So that's the only other uh, member of the public present. If any members of the public join, we will afford them an opportunity at the end of the meeting to uh, make any comments or ask any questions or follow up on anything in the meeting. But uh, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the January 10th, 2022 meeting. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes? Yeah. Are there any additions, amendments, deletions, revisions? No, seeing none, the chair will accept a motion to approve the minutes of the January 10th, 2022 meeting made by Trustee Van Ow, seconded by Trustee Persons. Clerk, uh, I'll call the roll. Trustee Macy Phelps. Aye. Trustee Cole. Aye. Trustee Ryan. Aye. Trustee Van Ow. Aye. Trustee Persons. Aye. And the chair also votes aye. The uh, minutes are unanimously approved. The next item on the agenda is the director's report, which is, uh, as our, our practice is to um, uh, accept as submitted and get, afford uh, Lizzie an opportunity to highlight or add anything to her report. Lizzie. Thank you. Um, we have a packed agenda, so I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. Um, we have newsletters that we have updated and over the past few years, we had a Oh, I think it was called Book Sizzle. And it was kind of an automated, um, it wasn't customizable. So we just had that sent out every week. And uh, we were, now we are joined with the friends, have a constant contact account that they um, were gracious enough to let us, you know, join forces and be able to use that to craft our own in-house um, newsletter. So we have a adult general news one that will go out once a month. And the children's department has worked together to create a new youth services one. So um, when people sign up for new library cards, they can check off if they want to be added onto them. And they're really, really professionally nicely done. I'm really proud of the staff who, who've um, cultivated this great template. They can highlight, you know, what programs that are coming up, programs that we've recorded that they can access. Um, we were talking, I know we're going to talk about strategy later on, but when we start to um, want to let the public know what we're working on and in their input, we can have an update, you know, its own little box in the template that can say, hey, this is what we're on now, or if you want to sign up to, you know, participate in this. So um, I'm really excited. I think we've been working, we've been wanting to do that for a few years now to really have something that's more tailored to our needs. So we're doing that. So I want, I attached it, I linked it to the director's report. So let me know if you couldn't open that up. And if you haven't signed up, you can sign up under on the website under newsletter, and you can mark if you want, you know, kids only, or, you know, a little bit of you know, we have a book related one, adult general news and a youth services one. Um, and then something else I updated, we've talked a lot about the Poet Laureate in the last year. Um, and Chris Coleman and I have drafted a, we've kind of combined a lot of different documents that were out there about, you know, what is a Poet Laureate? We just kind of made it in layman's terms. Like if you were to say, what would that do in town? We, we created, you know, the, the top ideas of what we expect how to go forward. And we're finally going to present it to um, the select board at their next meeting. And Paul, Chris would like either you and I to attend if possible, just to be there to Actually, support it. When is that meeting? Uh, February 28th. 28th. Yeah, I can do that. I'm not okay. available next Monday, but sure, I can certainly be okay. there. And um, another update from something that we've talked about in the past year was the Philbrick portraits. So we, the ones that can be hung, we now have organized and labeled and they are RFID in the back so that they are now security activated. If someone were to take one of the tiny ones and walk out, we would now be alerted to that. So they're getting ready to, um, Jimmy and the facilities team is going to systematically hang them around the library. We have identified spots on the wall so that we can 
finally share this great collection with the community. Uh, there are, I think, four or five that needed various, you know, either re re reframing, rematted, and a few that needed, uh, they were damaged. So we got Trisha London, who works Monday nights at the library, has really taken a passion project with this, and she's worked closely with Abby to identify different local artist shops and framing places. And we've got the best bid from this um, lovely man, Moses, from West Roxbury uh, Framing. And so it the total for four or five pieces and various things is going to be 675. I wrote 535, and I just got the updated... <laughs> invoice for all the work that we needed done. So um, my question is if I could have approval from the board to, to use state aid to be able to get those last pieces um, fixed and ready to be hung in the library. So I don't know if I do that now, but I, I didn't know where to mention it. Oh, Paul, sorry, you're muted. Um, I certainly, I think we could, we could uh, discuss that at this point. It seems pertinent to the director's report. Does anybody have any questions or comments on um, Lizzie's request? No, the chair will accept the motion if, if that is the wish of the trustees to authorize Lizzie to expend up to 600. Would that be? I think it was 675, so up to 700. Up to $700 uh, to... Uh, finalize the framing, matting, and repair of the Filbrin portraits. Is there, so, is there a motion to that effect? Made mm -hmm. by Trustee Persons, seconded by Trustee Macy Phelps. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Trustee Macy Phelps? Aye. Trustee Cole? Aye. Trustee Ryan? Aye. Trustee Van Ow? Uh, aye. Trustee <clears throat> Person? Aye. aye. And the chair also votes aye. It's uh, approved unanimously. So you are authorized to expend up to 700 from state aid for that purpose. Thank you. Anything further on your, your report, Lizzie? No, that, those are the highlights. <laughs> Anybody have any questions or comments of uh, follow up on Lizzie's report? No, seeing none, we will move on to the next item in the agenda, our monthly uh, COVID-19 uh, update. Lizzie? Well, there's not much of an update. I think we're, I think we're, I don't want to say it out loud. I think we're coming through this uh, Omicron surge. Um, so we have been just staying the course of the municipal buildings in town are still requiring masks. Um, we have a department head meeting this week. So I'm hoping that we would have an update as to when we will be lifting that mandate. Mm -hmm. I know that the schools have voted to lift the school mask mandate February 28th. So I'm, I'm thinking that I would feel comfortable as a public building that we were also moved towards that, um, kind of going one step forward again. And just, you know, with the reality that maybe in the winters, this will be something that we have to, maybe people will self-select, encourage, but I'm thinking as we move towards spring, we can start to lift some of that and, and you know, get back to normal again. <laughs> so that's luckily the only biggest uh, COVID-19 COVID update is, is that hopefully we can lift the Required is the, board, is the board comfortable with with giving Lizzie the discretion, assuming that it's consistent with the rest of the towns? If the rest of the town is going to remove the mandate, I have I think that would be consistent with what we've done in this uh, to, during this pandemic to stay as, as connected to the town and their policies as possible. So I certainly have no problem giving you that discretion. Any comment on that? Is am I reflecting the sense of the board that that? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's my sense. Yep. All yes. right. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is staffing update. Hey. <laughs> um, okay, so we have had a little bit of some transitions. Um, due to a resignation, we had Patty Wade, who was at 20 hours, she um, opted into a 12 hour position, which opened up another benefit position, um, which we had, we went out to interview again, we interviewed two more, three more candidates, and we had two others that we had also interviewed in the December round um, that we considered. And we're happy to have uh, Katie Imbergano, who is um, formerly, but her previous married name was Katie Connors. <laughs> so she is joining the, the main library uh, as a library assistant. Uh, so she will be working under Karen Gallagher at the circulation desk. And Katie actually worked 
um, part-time or as a sub, when I first started, she was working in the children's department, uh, mostly in the summers and would pick up shifts. So when I started there, she was working in libraries and has gone on to work in various customer service and, and public service desks in different avenues and has been you know, dying to come back into the library field. So we're very happy to kind of welcome her home um, and to this new position. And then we've had two other uh, subs who have moved on to other full-time jobs. So we have brought in two new ones who we also interviewed for various positions. So one is Zoe uh, Dickerson. She works part-time in Medfield Library and she lives in Dover. And Brenna Highland, who um, is starting her work in library. So we're going to introduce her to, to working in a library, which I'm excited because I know she is excited to kind of get to work to libraries. So they will be new subs that when um, later this month, Karen will be bringing in and training them. So so you'll see a few new friendly faces, but I think I say this every month. I think finally we're like fully staffed <laughs> and everyone is excited to be here. Kristen and Annabelle have been great. They've been working really hard and I know we're going to talk about the branch uh, soon, but it was great to see their faces welcoming people into the library. So I'm very happy. <laughs> Please extend now welcome to the new staff, part-time and full-time staff. Any questions on staff? I do have one question. Lizzie, yeah. uh, is everyone wearing name tags? Yeah, we had to for, well, we've ordered five new name tags, so they're not in yet. So yes, yeah, so some of the new staff you've seen today are still without name tags, but they are on order. Okay. Yeah, and they will be, because with masks, it's definitely hard to navigate who works there and you know who they are. All right, any further questions on staffing? Uh, at a me future meeting, you know, we'd love to have the okay. new staff who hasn't formally met the board maybe if it's uh we could do it at one meeting if it's how many how many individuals are we talking about Lizzie? um i think there's one two three about five well three new full-time benefited and mm -hmm. then the two other subs so baby I mean, basically five we could do like a speed dating round come yeah. in <laughs> a meeting to meet the three new full-time and then at the april meeting the part-time sure okay great Thank you. Any further questions on staffing? The next item on the agenda is happy uh, <coughs> Wedworth Hall Islington Branch Library update. We're open, everyone. Come visit. <laughs> Officially today, yes, at four o'clock. We had um, the trustees, we had Jess and Maureen and Mary Beth and Maria were there to see the official ribbon cutting ceremony. So it was very cold and very brief, but we, we were able to unlock the doors and I was pleasantly surprised that, I mean, Mary Beth, did you say, see there was like 50 people in total there? I mean, about I that. I think so. I think yeah. that, was, that might even be a little conservative. Yeah, I was I was hoping we'd get, you know, a few residents who live close to the library because it was very cold out and but very I, cold. Yeah, yeah, it was very it was cold. great. The library I've got some pictures. The library was full. There were children there picking out books. Um, there were a lot of Claire's regulars that came in and it was just a really happy place to be. It really was. So we are open. So starting tomorrow, we'll be open at 10 a.m. Close at 6 p.m. Wednesday will be open at 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Thursday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, there's a few. The only thing we're really waiting on, which I pointed out in my report, was our copier kiosk. That's about, you know, no, like two months out just due to it. They're not coming to America. So we do have, um, you know, stopgap measures in, in place. So we do have a copier you know, a, a smaller unit of one that we're they're using. So you can still come in and copy and print and do all of that. But we do have plans to add that copier kiosk to the business center when it comes to America. So we're very excited. <laughs> Must be on the same shipping thing with the dishwashers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, um, I did want to say I included a few pictures in the report. And these are also pictures that went up to, uh, I think, the Westwood Minute. I spoke to Darlene, and we had a really great conversation on Thursday that she uploaded to her uh, West, Westwood Minute website. Uh, and, you know, we've been talking a while about having staff rotate and be at both locations so that, you know, everybody in town can see the same friendly faces when they visit, whether the branch or the main library. And we got a delightful photo. And I was telling Mary that I was going to, Mary Beth, I was going to tell to just let you all know, because I didn't specify the names who are in that picture. And it's Claire, mm -hmm. and next to Claire is Annabelle. So Annabelle will be at the branch 
uh, most days. She will also be at the main library Mondays. And on the other side of her is Kristen Barenthaler, who will be at the branch two days a week. And then you probably know Patty Wade and Andrea Varkas, Linda Scary, and Caroline Ty. And they each will be at the branch um, either in the morning or an afternoon during the week between Monday and Thursday that we're that they're open. So and you can just see by their faces, they are just so excited to be there. And it's changed for a lot of people, but I'm happy that it's really bringing a lot of positive energy to to the and you know having ideas of oh we do this at the main library we can do this display here and then this morning andrew's like we have that staff picks display at the branch we can make one and do one here so there's going to be a lot of great crossover and and you know that uni unity that we've been looking for so i'm happy we are so happy it's been a long time coming well, thank you <laughs> really thank you guys i feel like the, you know, the trustees made a commitment to the town that that as part of the Islington project, there would be an, a branch library and that we would enhance that library. We would, and we've been able to do that. We're expanding the hours and hopefully we will be giving all of our patrons a, an even more positive experience in that library. And it, it gives us the opportunity to do more programming and really make it something to be proud of. And I thank all of my uh, colleagues on the board for their diligence over the past three years. And, and uh, you, Lizzie, in the past year in working us, and I particularly want to thank uh, Trustee Macy Phelps and Trustee Persons who have been involved with this uh, from the start of the Islington project since they uh, were on the board before us. And Trustee Persons even was on the Islington Task Force. I believe. Yes, we were reminded today that yeah. the meeting started in 2016. Wow. That wasn't really even the beginning of this. We uh -huh. were having uh -huh. conversations long before that about. Yeah. You know, so that that just seems like ages ago, <laughs> like 2016. When I heard that today, I, it's really, I mean, talk about a long time coming. So it's it's amazing, but it's there in place. And thank you to everyone who's involved. I feel like I came in in the, the sweet spot where I just got to, you know, <laughs> you know was, we were, they were like, yeah, we, it was a lot of work getting everything set up, but it was the, it's like moving into a new house. You're like, okay, so. I, I'm definitely grateful. <laughs> so you were in the trenches yes. you know, Leslie, because you you worked through all those moves and closings and everything else. So you yeah, were in the trenches. Take credit, Lizzie. Take credit. That's okay. right. And, and, uh, I just wanted to say it, it it looked beautiful today. And you and the staff left no detail, you know, untouched. It was a lot of work, I'm sure, not just to, you know get the books on the shelves but all of the little details and everything looked really terrific and was noticed i'm sure by everyone that was there it's really a well-oiled machine already yeah i i think you're right claire and and the library system some you know both the main and the branch have worked hard on those details that really make westwood library feel like westwood library and and islington feel like islington and, and kind of meld them together those details whether it's this display or this and moving things here and and making it feel welcome. So yeah, a lot well, of good work. We want to do the same thing, the, the same goal that we had when we built the new library, which is a great building. It's just one part of it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Facilities, but then the programming and the services that you're able to do in that building is is even more important. Right. So we have the building after yeah. a lot of work. And now the next phase is to make it a real, real asset, and a real place of lifelong learning mm -hmm. and experience. And that's what we're going to, that's, I think the board, we move to the next phase, which is to, to bring it to life, to, bring it to, to make life, that building a, a true asset. Yes. Yeah. Tested the system. I took out a book. <laughs> <laughs> it worked seamlessly. So we're, we're, we're open for business. Yeah. Yeah. Beth, you should be reading that right now. It's a big book. <laughs> It's a speed read. <laughs> Trustee Ryan, did you want to say something? Yes, I wanted to say that um, compliments to the friends for the beautiful mural um, that they had um, put in place. It's it's lovely. The the and also to just mention that uh, Chris Coleman, Pat Ahern, John Gaudy. I don't know some of the other names of the people. I'm sure some of you do, but I, I was very happy to see so many people who took the time to come that um, were able that were, you know, that were able to come. Oh, and um, Lisa Brandon represented the nursery schools from Westwood nursery school. She was there and 
Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. If maybe some of you can fill in more names, but I thought it was really nice. Yeah. That people, you know, took the time to come. Yeah. Mike Gillette. I knew you'd know more of the name, Nancy. Uh, I forgot about her. Of, and um, again, yeah. we also, again, uh, want to thank, excuse me, what'd you say? I, we also want to again thank the 21st Century Foundation for the business center. Yes. Yeah. Is something that the branch did not previously have, which is right. a really yeah. enhancement. It's great. Looks great. It's good. Yeah, I did. I did most of my afternoon work there today, and it was lovely. <laughs> I want to leave this spot. <laughs> so if we're looking for you, we know we have to find where to find me. <laughs> so thank you, 21st Century Fund. And well, also Maureen, Jessica, Mary Beth, and myself were there representing the trustees, which was really nice. Yeah. To support Lizzie and the whole okay. thing. So. And we would like you to, to start gathering obviously feedback from people. And and I'd like at the every meeting in the few coming months to, to have some. Feedback. I met an old friend that I taught with, and she and her daughter came, and they said, "Oh, they loved it, and they were so happy that it was open." So there's there's some immediate feedback. Right. I can well, definitely like, do that. Thank it's you. Like, is that a recurring item on our agendas uh, again to, listen <laughs> to get feedback and see how the new hours are work, the expanded hours, and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Claire seems very happy with her office. I'll give you that feedback. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anything else on the branch? No, oh, that's it. Okay. Uh, the next item on our agenda is a strategic plan update. And I know that we have Cece uh, joining us. Uh, so I will uh, turn it over to Cece and uh, Lizzie and our uh, trustees on the strategic planning, Mary Macy Phelps and Maureen. Ben. Well, shall I begin, ladies? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we, we met the other day and uh, you received some, you know, uh, material in your packet, um, which was a little bit lengthy. So uh, for the sake of time, we'll kind of just go over some highlights. Um, first of all, we're using, uh, the library is using a fresh approach to the for developing our strategic plan. Um, and what's different about that, uh, <clears throat> will be, I can note, give you some notes on that and in about three different ways. It's very different from the last strategy plan, for example. First of all, the library is using uh, data and analytics to explore trends across the library's 10 software programs and to answer the key questions that we looked at at our last meeting. Um, they're pulling in the community um, and casting a wide net for community participation, trying to reach as many people as possible. Um, also a, really a focus trying to get users, but also non-users of all ages. That, that was also sort of a, you know, interesting to me that um, the staff really wanted to pull it, try to pull in more non-users and what, what can we do to do that? So that's, that's great. Um, strategic partners as well as, you know, town departments, schools, <clears throat> and other community groups. So that, that's all kind of happening now and um, moving more forward through February and March in particular. The staff is very involved. Um, one of the great things I think is that they were given the opportunity to select some specific areas, uh, research activities to take part in that might particularly interest them. <clears throat> Sorry, I think the cold air got to my voice a little today. Um, both on an individual level and, you know, working together across departments, which is a new thing for them. Um, and just such a great way to um, get them involved and take ownership of whatever pieces of the project they'll be working on. Um, it's also great for interpersonal growth too. Let's see. Um, okay, so some of the things that they will be doing will be, you know, really looking at uh, the library's future and sort of stretching their thinking about possibilities for the future. Not just the three years that the plan is going to be for, but where it's going to be a living plan, you know, 
using that to move even beyond that time. So they're really doing a great job. And um, I also think that uh, want to uh, give some appreciation to Cece because for myself, and I think I can speak for my steering committee partners, she has really been um, very available, made herself available and very engaged with us and you know, really helping with the organization of this, which I appreciate. Um, so I'll turn it over to Mary. Thanks, Maureen. Yeah, and I, I second that, you know, uh, Cece and, and Lizzie are doing, really doing a great job shepherding the effort. And Maureen and I come in uh, once a month and, and kick the tires and, and ask some questions. And, um, you know, I think are just coming away. I, I know I came away wowed pretty much uh, after our meeting on Friday. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as Maureen said, the staff is really involved. And one thing that struck me, which I think is really making this thing happen, is that, like, that Maureen said that the staff got to volunteer for what they're doing. And so everyone feels like they have skin in the game. They really feel like they own this plan, much more so than when we did it five, six, seven years ago, however many years it ago it was now. Um, so I, I think that's great. And I, I, we, we wanted as a, as a strategy team, first of all, to thank the trustees once again for um, speaking with, with Connie last, uh, last year in November and December. Um, your input has been critical. Uh, that informed a lot of the a lot of the strategic questions that you bubbled up to the top have informed directly the kinds of questions that the team is exploring and the research projects that they're doing. So again, thank you for that. There's just been a ton of work going on. You know, the the timing of this has worked out really well between it being, you know, winter time and and um, with uh, you know the with if there's one thing we can thank the the pandemic for possibly. <laughs> Is that with some of the, the the retrenching a little bit over the last last month or so that has given the staff more time to spend on some of these things and and I know uh, Maureen and I did get, you know I I particularly pushed pretty hard on okay you know how, how's the timeline working you know do you feel like you've taken on too much are you comfortable with us and the staff has gotten to do a tremendous amount of work you you probably saw in the 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 plant the report that you got. There are about 24 research projects. Now, some of them are, are very limited in scope, and they've done a really great job of kind of chunking these things out into to manageable sizes. So the staff has been able to do a tremendous amount of work. Right now, they are in that research and discovery phase. Um, and two of the big areas of focus are going to be the um, uh, the, the survey that they're going to do, as well as some community focus groups. As, as Maureen mentioned, um, you know, as part of this, they want to get a lot of community input. That's scheduled for March, and the timing of that is really good because it's after the branch is open. It, after the branch opening, it's after February vacation. March is that that sort of quiet month in the winter time uh, where people aren't outside jogging yet, and you know we're not into the, the the first communion and 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 wedding and graduation seasons yet. So the timing is really going to work out um, quite well. Uh, with the idea that um, the, the Board of Trustees should be able to see a draft in June, and then it would be able to go to the, you know, the greater town, you know, the, the, the town um, for approval in July, which, so we've, we're still in great shape in terms of the timeline that we're on um, to get this to the MBLC when it needs to be submitted in October. Um, no, I guess, uh, questions on what Maureen and I have, have reported so far? No, the the report was very detailed. It was very detailed. Yeah. There was a lot. I, I will know. say. Oh, sorry. I was just gonna say. Or, or CC, if you guess, yeah. Something. Yeah. When Maureen said that, you know, thank you to CC for being available. I, I feel I, we talk on a daily basis, but we have a regular check-in weekly, and I know that CC met with Claire yet, uh, you know, early this morning, and we have a one of our division of research is a communications team that is that is really excited to okay we well, you know where can we reach non-users where can we put flyers you know how do we draft a you know um i forget what we're calling it it's like a re research participant form so if someone is interested in being in a focus group you know fill this out which gives us some demographic you know how long have you live in westwood which library do you use regularly that type of a thing and within like i think i got to the branch around 1 32 o'clock and i checked my email from going from one library to the other and they had already, you know, we had a draft of it and they brought Christy in, Claire and Cece, re, like, you know, edited it, got it into one page and were, you know, 
Christy's like, okay, I just printed 40 copies. And I had Caitlin and Corinne at the ribbon cutting today already just being available for people to come in and say, hey, do you want to fill this out? We're doing, you know, research. Let us know. And I was I was like, how did that happen in four hours? So yeah. props to our staff, but also, you know, that availability where, you know, having CC on board was, was definitely to see that today in action was kind of amazing. So, but I will, you know, we'd worked on it, but to have it like ready to go for four o'clock was it definitely okay. missed that opportune moment. So that was handy. Cece, anything you want to add at this point? I, I really just wanted to be on tonight. Thank you so much for all the comments um, and the updates. I just wanted to join tonight. I don't normally join every meeting, but just to say hello to you all. It was such a pleasure having the opportunity to chat with you in November and December. And uh, you know, you've heard the updates, you've read the reports, but I wanted to just comment on what I think is an extremely cohesive collaboration that's going on. And there's just interaction. It started with the board discussions, the one-on-one -on -one discussions uh, in November and December, and it's just had this fabulous trickle-down effect through the department, you know, through working my partnership with Lizzie to co-lead this, but then really engaging the department heads first, bringing them together as, as a team that's thinking about the future, while they also manage the complexity of the day-to-day -day operations. And, and then as they embrace that more fully, they made the choice to engage their teams and to give people the opportunity to take part in the research. And I know from my experience that uh, having the staff in the organization involved in that really helps to drive the stick factor on the back end because they're gonna be the ones that will be living this plan and implementing it. And uh, having them involved so that they see how things come about is really, it's really important. So it's, just a real pleasure to work with you all. And um, I'm enjoying it very much. And I, I think we're, we're, we're gonna be learning some interesting things. And the next step as we move into completing the research and that'll be over the next month, six, six to eight weeks or so, is there'll be key findings reported. Um, and then from there, we synthesize and we pull it into the strategic plan draft that you'll be seeing in June. So thank you. Thank you. Any any questions with trusty persons? No, I, I just, um... Thank you so much, uh, Lizzie and Cece and, and Maureen and Mary for everything you're doing. I, you know, as I was reading through this and I was like, just, I loved the breakdown of how, you know, into the four areas and then how each project related to those four areas. And it, for me, it was a little bit of a contrast between having worked on the last plan yeah. that, you know, the last plan felt a little bit more like, you know, um, really kind of navigating or, or trying to move kind of a, a big cruise ship around, you know, it was a little bit, like, oh, you, know, and, you know, and this just seems so nimble and, you know, really like just as, as Lizzie explained how, how quickly someone could just respond like that, your staff and Cece and everyone together. And I just think that's fan fantastic. So congratulations to you guys. That's awesome. Um, it, it looks, it seems like it's going great. Thank you. Any and, and we should we should thank the thank the staff for their ongoing work. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah and tell that they are that uh, from the materials how committed they are and how much they're sharing of their their talent and their time in this project. I thought one of the most um, you know one of the things I highlighted when I was reading through uh, the teams and you know and is the fact that they signed up. Participation was voluntary, but they all signed up for at least one team and six of them signed up for more than one team. I, yeah. I mean, I think that's, you know, we've all been in work situations and, you know, sometimes it can be, um, you know, difficult to get people on board for those kinds of things that, you know, voluntary. So <laughs> this, this is great, it really is, it's a, a testament to them and to you, Lizzie, and to Cece, I think. I'm definitely really proud. I sent them all an email today and brought in some Valentine's Day treats. And I just <laughs> said, I'm so impressed by, I mean, I'm so grateful, but I'm impressed. They never cease to, cease to impress me of just the natural curiosity and passion dedication that every person on the team, you could be working in CERC or tech services mm -hmm. has for their job and to, to get a chance to, you know, oh, I normally work in tech services, but now I have time to, you know, partner with somebody and look into what our library's best practices are and how does that apply to Westwood and the ideas that are bubbling up in small ways and big ways. It's really great to see, but honestly, it's, I'm, we're, that's what, back to what Paul was saying, that's what makes 
Westwood, a great library is not just the building, it's it's the people who bring that to life and the services. So we are all very lucky and I'm really um, thankful that everyone has been on board with this because this is a new plant, new way to do it for all of us. It's very unique. And the fact that I have, you know, everybody that's on board and trying something new, it's been great. So well, please also tell them how much the board appreciates their willingness to really take on this project and be a part of it and go above and beyond. I'm not certain the least bit surprised knowing <laughs> the staff that we have, yes. but but please do convey to them our appreciation. I will. Maureen's right. It's not always easy to take on extra things yeah. when it's years old. Mm -hmm. And if anybody is in the library ever and you see the staff, please reiterate that. I tell them, but I know it's always nice to hear in passing, you know, so that's, well, that would be great. It would go a long way. <laughs> well. Okay, any further discussion? Well, thank you for joining us, Cece. I know you'll be we'll be seeing more of you in the upcoming meetings. Thank you. The next item on the agenda relates to the ongoing policy review that we've undertaken this year as part of the strategic plan. It seemed like a good opportunity to look at some of our policies. Um, the first policy we'd been discussing was the collection development uh, policy. And I know that at the last meeting, we had asked uh, uh, Lizzie to get some comments and thoughts and revisions from the um, staff. Mm -hmm. I see that, that uh, they've done that. Yes. <laughs> and so, there, there wasn't much, much change. Um, a few of them had already read it before and I sent it out again and I asked for any feedback, any questions and, um, you know, some had compared it to other libraries and were actually happy that this seemed a little bit more thorough covering. Some libraries tend to keep it brief, probably in a way to interpret it, but they like that we've added, you know, something about local uh, local history and something to do about, you know, um, local authors and where to put these things and really giving them direction because as staff, you know, this policy helps guide them to how to respond. And so um, the department heads were, were, okay with this version. So I didn't, I brought it back up to this meeting as a, to get the official approval to update that policy. Um, this is my first time. So I don't know how that normally has worked in the past. <laughs> if I, so I guess I'm handing it now back off to well, how I that mean, works. Do it now. I, if people want uh, some time to look at it further or I can put it on. Um, I, I, I don't know if we have to, I mean, do people want to do it now or how, how do people feel? I'm certainly. I, I didn't, I didn't have any other any further questions, but see what the other trustees think. Anybody? Uh, my I colleague. agree with Mary. I we, we had a first look last time and, and you know, there have been revisions made, so I'm good. We've had two public, you know, yep. this is our second public discussion of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I'm, I'm fine with the content also. I, I think there's a couple of little, you know, typo kind of things that I can, well, why don't we do this? Why don't I mean, we do it offline? <laughs> yes, yeah, because I try. I I did another copy edit, but I, another pair of eyes, Mary Beth. That would be very helpful. Why don't we do this? So why don't we just we we any typos, anything like that? Let's just iron those out, and we'll put it on uh, the agenda for the next meeting for a, for a sure. vote approval. Sure. Okay. Approval. Yep. That, that makes sense. Uh, the other policy, and I appreciate uh, Trustee Macy Phelps and Trustee Persons' work on it, mm -hmm. which is naming policy. And let me just give my uh, colleagues a little uh, background and framework on this. The reason why um, we, we wanted to start a discussion on this is, as in within the 21st Century Foundation, the board there has been discussing, you know, uh, getting investment in in the library and naming rights and and that sort of thing, and we thought it would be. Uh, wise to have a policy on that generally and not just let leave it up to the trust uh, to the foundation we we felt that it's something for the trustees to to do and i've had um a, a discussion with with um uh, uh chris coleman and with uh some Dottie powers and and um seeing if there is such a pol I, there's there's not a general policy in the town um and so um trustee uh, Macy Phelps and trustee persons drafted a policy that uh, that we think we believe would be consistent with the bylaws, but certainly I, I would advise that we ask town council to okay. cast some eyes over it and that we share it with the with the uh, 
uh, selectmen and the other boards and because we want to you know do something that's consistent but that's that's what prompted it um the lack of a policy and and a desire to have the trustees really have a, a say in, in the naming with that I'll, I'll turn it over to uh, trustee macy phelps trustee persons yeah yeah th thanks paul for that context and yes you know as paul mentioned the the fund is interested in seeing what we can do to uh, really take advantage of what, what might be an opportunity to get some more investment in the, in the library by way of the fund, but also it, it's it's a way that it, it really builds community spirit and, and kind of people having vested interest in the library when, you, you know, the, what they see when they go into the library really reflects everybody and everything that it, it takes to make it happen. And um, although a, quite a number of things were named in the, when the new library was built, um, that was really done in an ad hoc fashion, I think, to that project. And as Paul mentioned, the town doesn't have an ongoing policy. And M Mayor Beth uh, did a, did a lot of um, uh, a lot of research. So thanks to, to trustee persons who uh, looked at a lot of different libraries and what they had, what their their fu their funds um, uh, tend tend to do. And in particular, there were two libraries. There was Jefferson County uh, Library and Wellesley Public Library that had what we considered to be very rich policies that laid out what we thought was a good framework, um, but also really gave the, the trustees as the, the elected governing body a lot of control and discretion in how they allocate names for the library. You know, you just look in the news at what's happened, you know, what, what happens with, you know, st statues and, and, and so on that, you know, it, it, needs to, it needs to be a policy that would let us respond to, think, to issues that might come up as well as give us the discretion to make sure that anything that's named or any names that are recognized are really done so um, in, in a way that, that's appropriate um, given the, our, our, our purpose in, in the town and given the you know, sh kind of shared values and things we wanna get across. Um, so we did send out, and thanks to Lizzie for, uh, for sending this out over the weekend, um, we, we drafted this based on the, on the other policies that we had, um, we had taken a look at. Um, and there's really two, I think, two fundamentally different things we're trying to support. One is actual naming. Um, you know, in, the, in the new library, for instance, in the main library, there's the, the Barbara Lloyd Hayes Children's Center and, and you know, the, the, um, the reading area that's named after Don Friedel and so on, where you, and those tend to be for more the, the big things. Those don't, wouldn't come across come come around as often but that's something where you might actually name something after somebody um well, but then there's also, also Mary, those are, yep. me, those, but those are also philanthropic based on philanthropic yes. yes correct thank you mary beth yes yes those are those are situations where there was a significant philanthropic donation that was that directly supported that project um and it came along with that naming opportunity um, there might also be situations where we might want to recognize a gift in some way. You're not actually naming the thing. Um, you know, for example, the, the business center at the Islington, um, at, at the new branch, it's not named for the fund, but the fund is recognized as having donated to that. Um, and there, you know, there are various other things that might be um, associated with recognizing um, a, some sort of a, a gift or, or something. Um, and you know the, the idea behind the policy as it's written is that the trustees would work together with the fund and with the director to develop and maintain a list of what we considered the kind of official, officially available things that you know, might be uh, available for either naming or name recognition. Um, and any kind of, of uh, name or name recognition would have to be approved by the trustees. Um, and there are, I, I won't go into all the details. You can certainly re read it on your own. But you know, there are we have tried to uh, account for the various things that might happen. You know, how long should that should a, a naming opportunity last? Uh, you know, what if something something happens and you might need to to change course? So we've tried to accommodate those, but also give the trustees you know ultimate discretion. And as Paul suggested, we would uh, what I think what we what I would suggest that we do, Mr. Chair, is. Um, if people have, if the trustees have questions or suggestions yep. this evening, that we, we kind of take one or two passes at this. Yep. And the trustees are satisfied with it, then we uh, we send it to town council. You know, obviously with any questions that might arise, or just in, and as well as just in general to look it over and, and make and sure. I'd also, I'd like to share it with 
with the, the, like yes, yes. Another book because exactly, I, I, I think yeah. it 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 has a lot of good stuff in it that would yeah. be useful as a general matter for the town. It's yes, agreed. Yeah. Any questions um, or comments? Yeah, Mar Maribel, did you want to? Is there anything? Yeah, um, I'd like to just bring up a point of discussion to the trustees. Um, in the first paragraph, we talk about how the Westwood Public Library system basically can accept or support directly to the library, kind of like the rubric, the um, the prints for um, Silver. Yeah. I'm sorry, what's it? Not the rubric. Silver the, prints. Silver. Right. Thank you. I knew I knew that word didn't come out right. The filbrick, um, or through either uh, the fund or the friends. Um, and so um, now, ideally, um, in ideally in raising money or larger sums of money for the library and for the long term health of the library, um, and generally through kind of a naming situation, you're looking at larger sums of money. And when you name something, you're talking about thousands, not hundreds. Right. And so you're talking about money raised and accepted through the vehicle of the fund. Mm -hmm. um, and so there, there has been language that has been, um, that has, has, it, it, it is in this policy. Um, and it, and we saw it originally in one of the other uh, policies that says that um, we will, it will give special consideration to the fund effectively. Um, and um, for amounts raised, I, I, I'd have to look at, I'd have to say the exact, um, the exact language. Um, and the, the, the inconsistency basically with that is because in the first paragraph, we talk about how we welcome support for mm -hmm. directly through the library and through both the fund and the friends. But then later on, we're saying we give special consideration for money's raised to you know to the, uh, given to the fund, um, I, I personally don't know. I I, I kind of I, I I understand where why that exists because what we're trying to do is we're trying to raise money through the fund, um, and we're trying to raise obviously like I say kind of these larger more capital donations. Um, and, um, and I guess what I'm trying to say is that if, for instance, if someone were to donate, you know, the same amount of money, maybe through the fund versus through the friends, and they both wanted to name the exact same thing, mm. you know, I guess is that, is that, is, is that what we're, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if we, I, I don't even know where I'm coming out on this myself. I would say maybe that, you know, we, I'm sure we'd work something out and we could, Special you know, consideration. you know, is, what is, is that? that Special yeah. consideration means a, like a deference, but it doesn't mean an, a, an obedience to us. You know, that's how I read special consideration. Okay. So we will give it a level of deference if it came from the foundation because of the work that they do on behalf of the library. But that does, that's no guarantee that, you know, that doesn't mean automatic approval. Do you know see what I'm saying? Mm. Because that's why if there was, if there was a, a, you know, two two gifts, the same thing. That's where the trustees would have to sort it out. And obviously, to me, to my, I read special consideration as just that we, we give you a degree of, of deference and listening to you, but not mm. not okay. automatic. You know, mm. but but that wouldn't be given if it were given through the friends. In other words, no, 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 no. It we could say to we could add the friends to that too if you wanted to to, to give special consideration to institutions or organizations that are particularly mm -hmm. valued partners to the library. Yeah. Uh, I, I would have, I, I think that's fine. Well, uh, why, why do we have to say it anyway then? We don't, I, we don't, I mean, we don't this, have to. It, it's just, I, it's just, it's just a decision we would make, which is look, yeah. want to recognize that there are partners that we have that we value. Mm -hmm. And if they make a request to us, we will take it very seriously you know, give some deference to, to the work that they do on behalf of us. That, that That's how all I read that as being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't have to be limited to, certainly doesn't have to be limited to the foundation. It could be. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think Mary Beth has raised a good point. And I, you know, I wonder, you know, lo looking, looking back at the draft now, whether maybe 
that should be either expanded to say that the that that we give special consideration to the the fund and the friends. Um, right. I don't know if we'd want to. Would we want to differentiate maybe that the fund is preferred vehicle for um, you know facilities, whereas the friends might be preferred vehicle for programs. I I don't know. I I don't want to. You know that yeah. again. That doesn't limit us. Right. Um, but what I what I see is I you know I think maybe that was taken for from it might have been taken from an example where there was only one you know auxiliary you know one affiliated um, uh, body you know whereas we've got you know where we've got the so. double riches of, of the sorry I don't think so I think it was yeah oh okay yeah I don't yeah let me ask a question I'm sorry yeah, go ahead, um I guess I'm just. You know, I, I read it all and, and I'm sorry. Um, so this is the naming policy draft for the Westwood Library. So it's yeah. naming for anything within the library facility or other recognition opportunities that you And I'm not sure. Exactly what Mary does. Are you bringing up the question of like how does this read? And it's making you think of in the first paragraph you mentioned the 21st Century Fund and the Friends um, range of opportunities, and then it continues throughout mentioning that the trustees will have the responsibility. Um, of renaming, renaming, and dedicating all areas of the Westwood Public Library system. But then as you get, if you're saying looking at this, is it, are, are you asking Mary Beth if it's a little bit um, fuzzy or uh, does, it, does it bring up areas of how, like, you know, how should that work if there were two different groups? Well I'm just Mary and I have had this discussion. Yeah. Mary and I, and, and, and I think it's a yeah. worthy one that if yeah. we're saying if we're saying that the library accepts donations through these different vehicles, mm -hmm. you know, why is it that we should give special consideration to something coming in through the fund? Yeah. Um, and you're saying and talking I, about how should you say that? Why is that? Yeah. And and right. And I, you know, I think I think naturally. Generally, monies raised are especially for endowments, naming opportunities, you know, large sums of facility, all those kinds of things usually come in through funds, fund foundations. You know, right. friends are a completely different mission. I understand. Yes. You know, but that because friends are part of the whole library system, just like funds are, that's right. what we say. We say, well, we accept right. money. If someone's reading this, we have to say we accept money through all of those things. Yes. But yes. Yes. special, maybe we should just say special considerations. Well, no, I was going to say for naming, but you yeah. know, if somebody wants to donate $10,000 to the friends, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Right. And if they want to have well, a naming, wonderful. Well, I think, I don't, yeah, right. I guess, I, what, what, what are, are, is that, yeah. So I, th I think we have a few different options. Mm -hmm. what, what I think bothers me about the way that's written now is that, it, as Mary Beth brought up, we're we're calling out one of the two supporting right. uh, organizations, and, and I, I don't know if that doesn't sit well with me. I, I don't think. Yeah. Um, I, I think we could either say we give special we give special consideration to something that comes in through one or the other, or we just remove it entirely. Um, and it's at the discretion of the trustees. I, I think my reading of where I've seen it elsewhere is just that the, I, I, I think the idea is that it's preferred for things to be, to, to come to the library through one of these auxiliary um, organizations. I, I guess may, maybe that gives it just an, an extra, um, uh, it, it just it, it kind of means it, it, it's come through the system a little bit more and maybe there's a little bit more thought around what's you know what's an appropriate um, request or, or bequest whatever to to bring forward. Mm -hmm. I don't know I, I honestly I'd be equally comfortable with with with, with either uh, right. because the trustees ultimately have the discretion, the way the policy, you know, would be written. 
I think and I guess what I was trying to say is you want to maintain that language, I would think throughout yeah. that it ultimately is up to the trustees. So, and some of it, as you said, will sort itself out in terms of uh, what the donation is and, yeah. you know, and how you'd want to reflect that in terms of a name, a naming or some kind of honor. Um, but I think, you know, uh, and the, the friends are primarily making their donations to programming. Mm -hmm. However, as you know, both groups uh, played a, a, a great part in doing something for the branch. Right. Um, you right. know, so, you know, I, I just and I think that, uh, you know, the friends group has, uh, you know, work so hard, but I'm trying to be careful about what I said because they are a very much evolving group now and uh, in, in some different ways than they were in the past. And, and so, you know, there uh, could be perhaps some collaboration that could bring some things to the fund as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in my observations of the last couple of meetings that I've gone to. Yeah, we certainly want the foundation. I know wants that wants a wants a partnership and, and that yes. Kind of, I mean, I think we could do one thing. Right we, word, Paul. <laughs> yeah, we could we could say, you know, we special consideration to the foundation and to the friends mm -hmm. of the public library and any other valued partner, you know, that sort of thing. And when I and and the reason why I think what, what Mary uh, Macy Fels was getting at is it the the the, the reason why you give them a, a level of the, the consideration, deference, whatever you want to call it is because they're people, individuals who are going out there and, and reaching out to donors and doing work yes. to, you know, and you, and you want that work to be valued. Right. Yeah. And, and I understand that I wasn't. Uh, yeah, no, I didn't say you weren't. So, so, yeah. so that, that's part it, of it, you know, because yeah, and that's a substantial thing. And, and yes. but I think we, you know, just as a, like on our, our working strategic plan, we have to think about um, those partnerships going forward too. Yeah, and I think, I think adding the, I have absolutely no, I, I think it would be very appropriate to add the yeah. one to the friends and we could even put language in and any other partners because it could come in the future. Some, you know, the schools, parents, some other group could just say, you know, we really want to yeah. make some investment in the library so so but it obviously i mean it's an evolving work that's why we're taking yes. yeah. meetings to to to, right. to, to yeah. get I, I really do thank you both for the work that you put into this it's really well done and i reflects i'm sure a lot of research looking to see what other places are doing and you know the language is wonderful i just but i understood where mary beth was coming yeah. from that yeah. feeling mm -hmm. that out yeah no yeah. Why don't we do any? So let's let's leave it. Why, there. why don't we amend it to to at least you know add the add the friends just to make mm -hmm. sure at least that way it's self, yeah. I think it's more self consistent. Thanks, Mary Beth, for raising that. I think I I I, I feel better already about that. Yeah, I do too. So why don't we do this? We'll add that and then we'll put that we'll on. Circulate it. Yep, it, and it, put that on next month too to continue the discussion on that and and hopefully right. move towards an approval of that sometime in the spring. Yeah. If okay. that that's what the board desires. Okay, uh, the next item on the agenda is, I think the friends, uh, speaking of the friends, uh, <laughs> update from Trustee Van Ow and Trustee uh, Ryan, any? Maria? <laughs> One thing, um, I, I met with, um, I think it was last meeting someone mentioned, um, or at some meeting, how much work it is to get the book fairs ready and so forth. and to going through the book. So I met with Meg and um, she showed me where the key is and I can go anytime to go in and kind of sort the books for the, for the uh, book, fair, uh, book sales. And so um, that's something I've kind of taken on, but I have, I've only gotten there once. I plan to go again to hopefully soon. Um, that and there's an upcoming pop-up book sale at the beginning of March, uh, 10 to one, I think on a Saturday morning. March 5th. Okay, yes. Yeah. Thank you. 
Anything yeah, further on the front, especially yeah, now? Other than that, the next meeting is uh, Monday night, the 21st at right. 7 p.m. It will be a Zoom meeting, I believe, or is it going to be in person? I think it's Zoom. I, I, I thought it was going to be a Zoom. But... Yeah. Or it could be hybrid because they did that once as well. Hybrid would be fine too. Ma March 21st? No, February 21st. Oh, February 21st. Monday. Is well, it it was Monday? President's Day. Okay. Yeah, wait a minute. I thought it was in. I thought it was going to be in March. That was the in the um, notes that we got after right. uh, the meeting that we went to. So I also thought it was in March. Hold on, let me check. You thought it was in March. It is in March. That's that funny. That's the funny thing about right. February and March. Yeah. Yes, they have some days that are okay. Three years out of four. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, the, Thanks. Thank you, Trustee Ryan. Trustee uh, ran out. The uh, 21st Century Foundation. Trustee Macy Phelps. Anything? 21st Century Fund. Yes. Thank you. Uh, the fund met on. Oops. Let's go. Uh, January 19th was it? And uh, yeah, so um, the the fund continues to be in in excellent shape. Um, Mary Beth can remind me where we left off with the, uh, the the report on the annual appeal, but it's you know certainly well ahead of last year, which is great. And I think even since that meeting, we've had at least one donation still come in. Um, the fund also reached a bit of a milestone uh, where we have uh, half a million dollars in assets. Uh, I think that that um, incurs an, an extra level of uh, due diligence that we have to do in terms of, of having an external audit, but Mary Beth's got that under control. Um, and um, we, you know, we already brought to you the um, naming policy because um, uh, as we discussed earlier, one of the things that the fund would like to do is to reach out to some local businesses um, either to you know apply to grant their grant programs or potentially just to you know ask them to go with an ask um, you know Lizzie and the um, and the staff I know particularly related to the plan we think there might be some significant opportunities uh, for us to go out and you know the the, the fund um, could potentially give a grant but also try to get get something you know even maybe underwritten um, by one of the local businesses so a lot, lot of discussion around that. Um, Mary Beth, was there anything that you wanted to add in terms of the uh, the annual appeal or anything else from the meeting? No, um, we still are getting uh, you know dribs and drabs of uh, donations, which is nice, um, both uh, by check and PayPal. So um, we will accept them, of course, at all times in all forms. <laughs> Bitcoin. Um, if anyone. <laughs> prefer to do that, I'll figure out a way to convert it. Um, anyway, so um, no, I think uh, I think we're good. I think you've covered most of everything else. I have anything to add either. I think you could. Uh, anything up in Paul, thank you. Oh, oh. Okay, um, the next item of the agenda is approval of the, the acceptances and expenditures on uh, the report submitted to the trustees by Lizzie. Any questions or comments on that? If not, the chair will accept a motion to uh, approve the acceptances and expenditures. The motion is made by oh. Trustee Macy Phelps, seconded by Trustee Ryan. I call the roll, Trustee Macy Phelps. Aye. Trustee Cole. Aye. Trustee Ryan. Aye. Trustee Van Ow. Aye. Trustee Persons. Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. It's unanimously approved. And I will come by tomorrow, Lizzie, and sign the report. Your yellow folder will be waiting. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, is there any new business? No? No? Okay. Uh, seeing none, um, before we adjourn, we have a policy of allowing members of the public who have any comments or questions or issues they'd like to raise uh, to do so at the board. And I believe we have at least one member of the public who is uh, a, a part of the participating in the meeting. Um, Ms. White, did you want to uh, say anything or do you have a question or anything we can help you out with and it, it, if, if so it looks like i think i think she's on mute so she's muted, yeah. but but you should be able to unmute yourself i have just unmuted myself and i just wanted to uh see what was cooking with the library and learn what's going on and i have no questions all right hi, and hi susan we hope you're well I am Susan. Well, we appreciate you uh, you taking the time and and it really mm -hmm. it, 
it, it, I, I have someone who believes very strongly in civic engagement. It, it, it really uh, always is a good to know that there are people who take the time on a busy, on a Valentine's Day to, to <laughs> make themselves aware and keep themselves informed about the, the mm -hmm. library or any part of town government. But thank you. Well, the library is always near and dear to my heart. Well, we, we, we work all the time to try to make it a real asset and, and, and we're, that's why we're so happy about what's going on with the branch. Go check out the branch, Susan. Yeah, you gotta come back. I will. I will. Not today, though, because I knew it would be mobbed. I was. <laughs> <laughs> it's open all week. <laughs> right. Any other members of the public wish uh, an opportunity to talk with us about anything? We always welcome that. Seeing none. The, uh, our next meeting will be Monday, March 14th. Uh, at uh, 7 p.m. And, and unless anything drastically changes, that'll be by Zoom, but hopefully we'll start meeting in person sooner rather than later. Uh, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Can I just ask a question for us, please? If, um, if in fact it does go to in-person, could it also be hybrid? Yes, I believe that would, that's within the open meeting law as, as, as uh, amended by the legislature. But we can certainly run that by a uh, town council. Mm. Great. I'm just hopeful that we'll, we'll be back all together in the same room. Yeah. Soon I, I'm not going to be around, so I yeah. could Zoom, but I can't. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And, yeah. and Mary um, Maisie Phelps pointed out that we used to, usually we do an Islington meeting mm -hmm. in October, but now that it's open, when we can meet, we might, I'm happy yeah, to. I think, I think the first meeting that we do in person makes it We'd love to do it at the branch. Okay. Um, uh, so there's been motion made, motion made to adjourn. Was it made? Who made the motion? Sure Trustee uh, Macy Phelps made it. Second by Trustee Ryan. Uh, call the roll. Trustee Macy Phelps. Aye. Trustee Cole. Aye. Trustee Ryan. Aye. Trustee Van Al. Aye. Trustee Persons. Aye. And the chair also votes aye. Approved unanimously. Thank you all. Uh, and en enjoy the rest of your Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's yeah. Day. Yeah.